All you gotta do to change the font of your page is decide what font you wanna use, say Roboto, and write font family Roboto. Really? No, not really. It's more complicated than that. Of course it's more complicated than that. Sorry. Typography is a gigantic topic in web design. And of course, you have a ton of options in CSS to better your font sizes, font styles, and its readability. Now, this isn't a design course, so I won't be covering design theory. I'm not gonna tell you what looks good and what doesn't, but I will show you how to manage your fonts in your HTML, CSS. You can use fonts that already exist on your computer and everybody else's computers, like Times New Roman or Arial. These are generic web-safe fonts, but they're limited and honestly kind of boring. Or you can use what's called a custom font. There are a ton of custom fonts out there. If you're a designer, you've definitely worked with custom fonts, so you know what I'm talking about. You're also not gonna like what I'm about to say. I'm not a huge fan of using custom fonts for websites. <gasps> what? <gasps> not because they're not cool or pretty, but for one thing, not all browsers render custom fonts the same way, or even correctly, so you potentially run that risk. Also, using custom fonts means anybody going to your site has to wait for the browser to download the font that you chose first, then render the site. Whereas with generic fonts, you don't have the problem. The user already has those fonts on their machine. So that's costly and it's time and bandwidth. Lastly, a huge proportion of custom fonts are great for banners and flyers and quotes. Please. But they are absolutely horrible for long body text like articles. The readability is not always the best. With all that said, a lot of people still use them for many different reasons. And trust me, I understand the importance of uniqueness and personality when it comes to design. In fact, Color Code's website uses a custom font on the hero page for, for the logo, but it comes at a cost. Custom fonts are like chocolate milkshake. They're so amazing but you really shouldn't be doing it, man, unless you are willing to pay the price. Anyway, I still want you to know how to use them and how to change your fonts. There are two things you need to do. Load or embed the font in the page, assuming it's a custom font. For generic fonts, uh, you can skip this step. Then change the font family property in your CSS. How do you load fonts? Using a link tag in your HTML or an at sign import or an at sign font dash face statement in your CSS to point to the location of that font. It could be loaded from anywhere on the internet and I'll, I'll show you a couple of examples in a second. But again, if you're using a default font, you don't need to load anything because Arial is already available on everybody's computer, iPhone and iPad and whatever else. So we're gonna get some help from our friends over at Google Fonts to demo this. So head over to fonts.google.com and I'll show you how. So here it is, a long list of custom fonts. Um, you can pick one and then look at the instructions. Uh, so I'm gonna pick Roboto in this case. And look, it even generates the code for you to embed and then set the font family. Notice the embed part can be done in a couple of different ways. Also, the CSS font family statement can take multiple values separated by a comma. This means, hey, Mr. Browser, if you can't find the first font for whatever reason, because it's a fancy one, go to the next one. If you can't find that one either, keep going until you find the, you get to one that you can render. You always want to have backups in case your custom font can't be loaded. So in the next video, I'm going to update our profile page to use Google Fonts. It will be our last demo in this course and it will instantly make our page look much, much more professional. All right, I'll see you there.